Hello and a warm welcome to the People's Church online service this Sunday. We are so thrilled. We are already into the third week in the book of Philippians and I am confident and I trust that you are being tremendously blessed with what God has been talking to you. You know, God has been doing some amazing things in the life of those who are tuning in and in the life of those who have also been a part of this beautiful prayer times that we've been having over the past couple of weeks. God has indeed been good. You know, this morning, I want you to keep your hearts open even as we go into God's presence. Now, I know that times are turbulent and a lot of things have been going on in the direction that we may not necessarily like to. But let me tell you this, God is good and God is faithful. So he is worthy of all prayers. I want to welcome you to join with us as we take time to worship God. But before that, we want to go to the Lord in prayer and open our hearts to him, even as he would come and touch us anew this morning. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your glorious presence that is already here in our midst. Even as we have come to seek you, even as we have come to hear from you, even as we have come to open our lives to you, I pray, Lord, that you will just do that. Lord, may our faith be lifted up. May our hope be lifted up by your word. Lord, we submit ourselves to you. Let your will be done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's sing this out. Let's praise. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it
At your feet, oh Lord, is the most high place. In your presence, Lord, I seek your face. I seek your face. Down at your feet, oh Lord, is the most In your presence, Lord, I seek your face, I seek your face. There is no higher calling, no greater honor than to bow and kneel before your
us. Think of the words. You are talking to the Lord Jesus this morning and say, Lord, I love you with all my heart. Hallelujah. Lord, we just want to lift up our hearts and our hands and express our adoration and our love to you, Lord. Lord, with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our minds, Lord, we love you and we give you glory. Lord, may your name be lifted up in our hearts and in our midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, at this time, we want to take some time to pray for you. If you have a need, if there is anything that is burdening you, if there is anything that is bringing you down, I believe even as you have worshipped, the presence of God is right there where you are and the presence of God is there to minister to you. So would you place your hand in your heart, be it a financial need, be it a situation that you're dealing with in your home, with regards to your family. It could even be uh, a sickness that you're battling with and the doctors have given you a bad report. In the name of Jesus, there is victory and there is hope. Friends, I want you to pray. Place your hand on your heart. If you're, if you're, in, if you're sick in body and you're, uh, there is pain in your body, place your hand if you can reach where that pain is or where that sickness is. And God right now is going to minister to you. Let's pray. Father, we want to lift up each every one of these brothers and sisters who are connecting with us right now. I ask you, Lord, that your healing virtue will flow right now into that living room, into that bedroom. Lord, your presence will flow and touch and set people free right now, Lord. Lord, where there is sickness, I pray that there would be healing. Where there is pain, I pray that the pain will leave in the name of Jesus. Father, for everyone in need of a financial miracle and a breakthrough, I pray that you will intervene and open the floodgates of heaven and pour out your blessing, Lord. Father, I pray for relationships to be healed. I pray for transformation in their homes. Lord, I pray especially at this time that you will be upon every marriage over every family, Lord, that your peace and your presence would guard them and lift them up. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for the answered prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, God, I believe, has answered your prayer. And right now we want to bring before God our nation. We've been through uh, floods, we've been through, we are going through the uh, COVID situation. We need God's grace. We need God's intervention. Let's pray and I want you to join your faith with me even as we pray and ask God's intervention over our nation. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every single flood victim. Lord, for everyone who is struggling right now, for everyone who does not know where their meal is coming from, where their next meal would come from, for everyone who have been displaced, Lord, for everyone who have lost lives, uh, for, for every family member that has lost a life as a result of this flood situation, I I pray for your grace and your presence to intervene, Lord. Father, you are a good God and you love every single one of these lives. I pray that you will touch 
and change their circumstances right now, even as we pray, Lord. We lift them up into your precious hands. And Lord, we also pray in the name of Jesus that every COVID patient would recover in our nation. Lord, that the ICUs will get empty one more time, that the hospital beds will get empty one more time. And Lord, that the healing of God would flow over every COVID patient. And we pray that the spread of this virus would be arrested in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for what you are going to do. In the precious name of Jesus, we ask. Amen and Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Friends, we are going to go into God's word right now. And uh, before we go into God's word, I want you to keep your hearts open as we have a very special song in store for you.
Today we are in our third sermon in a series on the book of Philippians, which we are calling Flipping Through Philippians. Uh, the reason we are calling it Flipping Through Philippians is because we are taking out main themes and we are trying to discover the joy of contentment in the book of Philippians. As I have told you all these weeks, Philippians is known as the book of joy. So in everyday life, we need joy and happiness in order to find contentment. So today we will be looking at part three, which is the path to contentment. The path to contentment. And we'll be looking at Philippians 2, uh, verses 1 through 11. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this time to share your word. We pray that you speak to us clearly from your word. Lord, as we seek your path for real contentment, I pray that Dishan would decrease and the Holy Spirit would increase. Let your will be done in all our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, if you were to go out on the streets and ask people, what do you think is the path to happiness and contentment? Most people would probably say something like this. Get an education, get a job, get married, then have a family, make a lot of money, and then retire. Now, that's the path to contentment, but I know a lot of people, if that was the path to contentment, right? they have all those things and they are not yet happy. Or they are not content. They are not content at all. The Bible says that the path to real joy is something you are never actually in your wildest dreams going to guess or imagine. Right? Because it's very clear. The path to happiness is through humility. It's through humility. You say, what? How in the world would humility make me happy? Well, there are many, many reasons why humility is the key that unlocks true happiness. And why pride is the thing that guarantees unhappiness in your life. So first, I would like us to look at conflicts. Conflicts kills contentment. Conflicts kills contentment. Now, one of the greatest joy killers in life, one of the greatest causes of unhappiness is conflict. You could have a lot of money, you could be very famous, you could be successful, but I want to tell you, if you have conflict in your relationships, your life is unhappy. Everything could be going great in your life, and you have an argument with somebody you love, and all of a sudden, that happiness just flies out the window. If you're ever going to learn to be happy on a long-term basis, you're going to have to learn how to eliminate conflict in your life. You see, that's actually where humility comes in. Let's look at Proverbs 13.10. Proverbs 13.10. Pride leads to conflict. Pride leads to conflict. Now, how many of you would agree with that verse? Right? Paul is advocating that harmony in every way possible is uh, uh, the saver for your marriage and in every relationship that you have. Right? Philippians 2.2 2, Philippians 2, 2 says, Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Now, can you imagine having a marriage like that? Right? It's a great marriage, right? But why don't we have it? Because we don't do the things God tells us to do. I don't know if you are uh, going through conflicts right now, but I want to tell you if you are, you came to the right place. Because we are going to look at how to reduce conflict um, with others. How are we going to reduce conflict with others? So the second thing I want to bring to you are four keys to kill conflict. 
four keys to kill conflict. The first one is don't let pride be your guide. Don't let pride be your guide. Now, no matter what the relationship is, I should never let my pride be my guide. Why? Because pride is the root of every other sin. Pride is a sin that got Satan kicked out of heaven. Every conflict that you go through has an element of pride mixed into it. What is the middle letter of the word pride? P-R-I-D-E. Right? The I is there. What is the middle letter of the word crime? C-R-I-M-E. And what's the middle letter of the word sin? S-I-N. I. You see, we have an I problem. I, I, I. I want what I want and I want it now and that causes all kinds of problems. Never let your pride be your guide. The most arrogant sportsmen, the most arrogant celebrities, the most self-centered entertainers are the ones we pay sometimes the most money to and pay the most attention to. The people with the biggest egos get the most money and the most press in our society. You know, Philippians 2, 3, Philippians 2, 3 says this, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Paul says that there are two conflicts, uh, actually two conflict creating kinds of pride. The first one is selfish ambition. Right? Selfish ambition says it's all about me. It's all about my needs, my wants, my fears. It's all about my success and my career. You know, we know people who have walked out of marriages because the marriage was standing in the way of their career. We know that sometimes boyfriends choose girlfriends and girlfriends choose boyfriends simply because of the image it gives them. They don't really care about the person. It's a, you know, or, or it's not about the relationship. It's all about me. James 3.16 James 3.16 says, For whenever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. Selfish ambition and jealousy cause conflict in marriages, in politics, in church, in the cricket board, in, in the club, wherever it is. If you won't play ball with me the way I want to play ball, I'm going to take my ball and go home. You see, it's all about me. It's selfish ambition. The second thing Paul says is vain conceit. Right? Vain conceit is that attitude that I am always right. I am always right and you're always wrong. It's always about me. It's about my needs. Paul says, if you're going to have happiness, you got to have harmony. If you're going to have harmony, you got to have humility. So never let pride be your guide. The second thing I want to talk about is don't stumble, be humble. Don't stumble, be humble. It's another way of saying the same thing, right? It's the flip side. If I'm not humble, my relationships will crumble. You see, humility is the basis and foundation of every great marriage and of every great relationship. Because in humility, you don't act like you know it all. And, and you know, you, you begin to treat each other with respect. And you give each other more and more honor. You don't go 50-50. You know, marriage is not a 50-50 relationship. It's a 110% uh, of give and 110% of take. Right? So you give 110% and your spouse gives 110% and you try to outdo each other in honor. Now, Philippians 2, 3, Philippians 2, 3 says, be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. Again, now that's the opposite of what our society teaches. Our society teaches, I've got to do what's best for me. I've got to look out for number one. If it feels good, do it. And all these selfish, self-centered rules that we've been taught throughout life, 
you know, come into play. You see, look at what Paul comes along and says. Paul comes along and says, no, be humble and give more honor to others than yourself. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. Humility is thinking of yourself less. Let me say it again. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. Humility is thinking of yourself less. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. Oh, I'm no good. That's not humility. That's false humility. Humility is you just don't think about yourself so much. You think about other people. The more you think about other people, the more humble you are. Let me give you another way of saying it. Humility is not denying your strengths. It's being honest about your weaknesses. It's not about denying your strengths. It's being honest about your weaknesses. You see, we are all made up with a bunch of strengths and weaknesses. I have some really great strengths and I have some enormous weaknesses. Just ask my staff, ask my family, ask the people round about me, ask me, I'll tell you. I'm not trying to hide them. You see, humility is simply being honest about both. Philippians 2, 3 again says, be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. Why should I be humble? Because God makes more promises in the Bible about humility than anything else except for generosity. Right? James 4, 6 says, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Notice the good and the bad. God opposes the proud. There are some things God hates. God hates ego, arrogance, pride, uh, uh, conceit, self-centeredness, even self-promotion. God hates pride. And every time I am prideful, I am on the opposite side of God. You see, if I'm in a battle with God, then I'm going to lose that battle because my arms and your arms are too short to box with God. So, we need to be careful, right? And we should not try to use pride and move in that realm. The third thing is, don't be selfish pay attention. Don't be selfish. Pay attention. You know, if you want to have a happy life, you're going to have, uh, to have happier relationships. And in order to have happier relationships, you got to sincerely pay attention to others. You know, we now live in this, uh, what, ADD, attention deficit disorder world. Everybody's got it. Why? Because our tools and technologies have uh, trained us to no longer pay attention to the people around us in our lives. We, may, we actually pay more attention to screens than we pay attention to people. You know, you walk into a meeting and how many people are sitting there and all they're doing is they're looking at their phones and they're texting. Right? They're not paying attention to people. They're paying attention to screens. And even in church sometimes. You know, somebody could be dying and in deep pain. But here you are in your own little self-centered world of just you. Right? I, 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 I closed out everybody else. And I'm in this. I'm with my headphones and, and my AirPods. And I don't hear or see anybody. You see, our technology has made us to no longer pay attention to people. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying headphones and iPads and phones and uh, these things are bad. I'm just saying, you know, don't let the donkey uh, of uh, uh, media, right, of social media, which we are supposed to ride, ride on us. You see, our technology has made us to not pay attention to people. In other words, you're sitting down with two friends, right? But what are you doing? You're sitting down with two of them, having a cup of tea, and 
your tweeting or your Instagramming to 50 others. You see, then your biggest worry is not the two friends, is anybody retweeting? Is anybody liking my post? You see, what is that saying? It's saying it's all about me. Social media can feed your pride if you let it. Be careful. You get distracted from seeing the people around you. That's why paying attention is very important. When did you give an elderly person who is not related to you a little attention that would make their week? You see, most of the time it's all about our agenda. You know, I, I, and I've got to get to my next meeting. As a good Samaritan, I think if somebody was lying on the side of the road, you might not even see them. But you see, through the word of God, I believe if, if we are going to be humble, we've got to learn to pay attention. Philippians 2.4 Philippians 2.4 says, don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. In other words, be interested in other people's needs. You know, not just your needs, in their needs too. Let me give you an example, okay? If I were to take a picture of all of you right now, let's say you have 20 people or 25 people sitting there, and I was going to take a picture of all of you, and I take the picture of all of you, and I give each one of you, well, I send a copy, or I show you the picture on the phone, right? Who is the first person you'd look for in the picture. No doubt. You'd go straight. If it's me, I'll go to where am I? Right? And I go and, oh, my hair looks good today. Oh, my goodness, my hair is not so good. Oh, I look fat in that color. Right? And you have all these comments. Now, if you thought you look good, you're going to say, man, this is a great picture. But if you don't look good, you're going to say, that picture is not so good, it's terrible. You see, that is human nature. You think about you more than anybody else. The greatest gift you can give somebody is your attention. Because your attention is your time. And your time is your life. You see, you're never going to get it back. So give, give, keep on giving. Don't be selfish, pay attention. The next thing I want to uh, tell you is don't demand, act like Jesus. Don't demand, act like Jesus. Philippians 2.5. Philippians 2.5 says you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. So if I really care about relationships and I want to lower uh, the conflicts in my life, I need to do what Jesus would do in the worst of times. Jesus would always humbly build harmony and happiness rather than difficulty, defeat, bitterness, and resentment. Right? So let's look at how to act like Jesus. How do you act like Jesus? Firstly, by not demanding. By not demanding. You see, we go through life thinking we deserve a whole lot. And when we don't get it, we get demanding. If some, you know, little peon somewhere doesn't meet our needs, we think that guy is a real jerk. And what happens? We start demanding. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't do that. Philippians 2.6 Though he was God, he did not demand and cling to his rights as God. My friend, Jesus is God. He comes to earth. He becomes a human being. And even though he is God, he doesn't demand his rights. He empties himself of all he had. Do you realize how countercultural that is compared to what we are seeing today here? Because, you know, we were brought up with this. I have my rights. It's my right to do this. Yes, it is. I'm not saying no. But it doesn't mean you demand it. Then you're not like Jesus. You see, there's a better way to get your needs met than demanding your rights. Look at Philippians 2.8. Philippians 2.8 says, 
he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. He humbled himself even though it was excruciatingly painful to him. You see, humility is the key. You can be tender without surrender. And actually you can be understanding without demanding. You can get your needs met without blowing people away. Just be nice. Just be nice. The second thing is how to be like Jesus is by serving others. By serving others. I look for ways that I can serve. Philippians 2.7. Philippians 2.7 says, And instead he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. You see, if you want to be like Jesus, you are going to have to learn to serve. That's the exact opposite of our society. Our society says the whole goal in life is to get other people to serve you. The more people who are serving you and around you, uh, you know, you feel like you're, you're very important and you think other people also think that you're important when everybody's serving you and around you. You see, that's what the world says. But God's value system is the exact opposite. It's not the more people serving you, the more important you are. It's the more people you serve, the more important you are. I think that's very, very important. You see, self-esteem does not come from your salary. Self-esteem does not come from your status. Self-esteem does not come from all your other stuff. My friend, self-esteem comes from service. The more you give your life away, the more God blesses you with honor. I remember Mother Teresa Mother Teresa, you know, everybody knows Mother Teresa. We don't know the richest man in the world. We don't know the, 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 the Mr. So-and-so or the Miss World or whoever but in the world. But we know Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa gave her life helping the least influential people in the world. There were beggars dying in Calcutta, India. And what happens? She gives her life and God raised her up to a position of influence and she had the influence over the United Nations and the US Congress and many nations and many leaders and all she did all kinds of things why 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 because God says the way up is down only in the dictionary honor comes before humility but God says before honor is humility and God says if you want to be great Learn to be the servant of all. In closing, I want to bring the last main point to you. Is the great reward for true humility. The great reward for true humility. Because Jesus was the greatest example of humility. God has given Jesus the greatest honor in the universe. You see, and this is the blessing I want you to look at. When you are a child of God, when you follow God, when you please Him, when you walk according to His word, right? I'm going to read three verses, so listen carefully, right? Philippians 2, 9 to 11. Philippians 2, 9 to 11. Therefore, God elevated Him, that's Jesus, to the place of highest honor, and gave him the name above all other names. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. In heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. You know when people say to you. You know what is this world coming to? You can turn around and say. You know, one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is who he said he was. 
that he is the son of God and he is the Lord. He is the king of kings and the Lord of all. All the politicians and all of the rock stars and all of the businessmen and all of the scientists and all of the celebrities and all of the housewives and all the sports personalities, everybody, every knee, you and me, we are all going to be saying, Jesus is Lord. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. Please don't look around. Don't move. Reverence this moment. We're going to pray. And we're going to ask God to touch you and me to make sure that we can walk in humility in this path so that contentment will be our portion. My friend, you know, sometimes as you travel this world and, and you're tri striving to do what is right, it may look like, you know, the wrong side is winning. That, that Satan is winning but I want to tell you Jesus is Lord it may look like your problems are you know insurmountable and and you're never going to get out of debt but remember Jesus is Lord it may look like you know you feel you just can't cope with one more day but I want to tell you Jesus is Lord it may look like we are never going to resolve these marriage problems. Hey, hey, Jesus, my friend, is Lord. It may look like circumstances are against me and people want to defeat me. COVID-19 has no cure. Vaccination has a lot of conspiracy theories. I don't know what to do. I want to tell you, Jesus is Lord. He is God and I am not, but he is God. You know, as soon as you do that and you come to that place of really meaning what you say, that's called humility. And it's the path to contentment. Take your left hand, put it on your heart, close your eyes, raise your right hand to heaven and say, Lord, I surrender to you. Lord, I surrender my arrogance, my pride. I surrender my will to try to do everything myself. And I surrender to your will. Lord, fill me with your humility. Lord, I come to you and I ask you today, like in the book of Philippians, in this chapter, Lord, that you will change me from inside out, that I won't be selfish. Lord, I will be humble. I won't let pride be my guide. Lord, I come to you and I ask you today that you will help me not to demand like Jesus never demanded, but to be somebody who is loving, kind, and nice. Lord, help me to also serve others. Serve my spouse, serve my children, serve those close to me, but also to serve anyone you put in my pathway. Lord, when people come who have needs on my path, help me not to say, oh, what a nuisance, what a botheration, but to say, Lord, thank you for the privilege and the opportunity. Lord, because I know as I humble myself, and Lord, as we do what your word says, touch my brother, touch my sister. Lord, let this grow within them and help them to be the man and woman that you have ordained them to be. And I know you will bless them beyond measure. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Even as we have heard about what God has to say about being content in life, I trust that your, uh, your heart has been blessed and I want to encourage you to continue to remain and reflect on these words that we heard today. If you have missed the last two sermons in this series in the book of Philippians, I want to encourage you, why don't you connect with the People's Church app, download it, go to the Play Store, even as you will see the information on your screen right now, download the app, uh, the podcast is available, the sermon is available, to be blessed. This is for you and you may go ahead and download the People's Church app. Friends, before I leave, I want to remind you that our prayer times are going to continue. And we have decided this time to continue our prayer times um, all the way till the end of this month, uh, till the end of June. And God has been doing some tremendous things in our lives during these prayer times. Families have been healed, hearts are being healed, addictions are being broken. And God is moving and speaking 
not only to the church leadership but talking to every single individual who is connecting so if you have been missing the prayer times i want to appeal to you friends we have a few more weeks uh, of being able to come together in prayer i want you to join with us the zoom links are available for you on screen or you can talk to uh, any one of us uh, uh, via the church uh, prayer hotline and you can get any information that you require so that you can connect with us in prayer we look forward to meeting with you next sunday may god bless you and give you joy